Well, uh, welcome again uh, for our last uh, session, final session, uh, Vienna Art Week on challenging orders, the role and responsibility of art in times of crisis. I'm really happy uh, to welcome uh, Jenny Makitu, uh, an artist uh, that I have long, long, long followed and collaborated, and uh, a, a Greek multidisciplinary artist based in New York. Um, great, uh, great work for, I know, at least I follow you for 30 years. Um, very engaging, um, but uh, not only working as an artist, you are teaching also at uh, several... Uh, exactly, uh, and, uh, but you also t uh, were teaching at uh, CalArts, at Cooper Union, so uh, giving your knowledge to the young generation. Uh, themes in your work, uh, body identity, public space, surveillance, uh, sorry for the talk in uh, German, I think you could have uh, contributed nicely. Uh, smell map, I remember. And uh, now we have a great work here in uh, the house that you will, uh, I think, present a little bit uh, in more detail uh, about uh, the, the oysters uh, in New York, where you have your uh, residency uh, at Governor's Island. I'm also pleased uh, to welcome uh, Katja Taylor uh, again. Um, for uh, many years already, uh, uh, you visited uh, Vienna Art Week. I was so happy that uh, um, just, uh, well, a year ago, you invited me uh, to visit you uh, in uh, Ukraine, uh, a wonderful culture park that you curated uh, was opened. And uh, for me, it was a fantastic uh, invitation, uh, kind invitation, so much positive energy I felt there, uh, great um, artistic works, great artists. Uh, and uh, so uh, such a positive and okay we create a better future and uh, only f uh, five months later uh, the, uh, the war uh, broke out i'm really glad to to have you here and uh, you're the founder of uh, port uh, you are also uh, co-founder of uh, artist uh, support of uh, ukraine you are also uh, engaged with uh, women in the arts uh, the award uh, for un uh, women um, you collaborated with UNICEF uh, and the Corruption I Initiative uh, of the European Union, also with uh, United Nations Development uh, Program and uh, USAID and much more. Um, here in Vienna, you can have a, um, a look at the, the latest project now. Uh, it's called uh, Walls, um, a yeah, pu public art uh, project that you are presenting in Vienna, in Marseille. Uh, I also think in Berlin and uh, soon hopefully in, in more more cities and also a recent initiative of yours, uh, Train uh, to Victory, that hopefully will be the case uh, at the end and uh, hopefully soon. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks uh, so much for joining our last panel, uh, panel here uh, about the role and responsibility of art and I would like to give uh, the floor first to, to Jenny and talk about uh, your work. Okay, uh, I want to thank you. I want to thank everybody for being here and for helping me to realize this project because as if I want to talk about my work, my work is, uh, I'm always very interested in working in teams, in bringing people together and creating spaces where we can uh, create social gatherings but also where we challenge. And for me, I would change the title and I would say, instead of challenging orders, for me, I'm very interested in challenging protocols. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I have been uh, practicing as, as I call myself a cultural producer, a multidisciplinary artist, but also I'm an educator because I is, I'm extremely interested how one informs the other. So I find it very important, especially since I'm always interested in uh, addressing critical issues that as an artist I am uh, faced in, in my time. So I find the last, this, you know, always there is, um, I, I, I cannot define myself by one medium. I always, def you know, I, m my project, my idea, my topics 
are defining the medium that I believe is the most appropriate in order to articulate my work. So I have been using new media work, I have been using uh, projects that they were always based just online, on the internet, in, in the virtual world, but I also have done a lot of uh, uh, public art projects, I have done a lot of projects that they ha are installations in museums. I am from Greece. I live though, and I studied in New York, so I would say I cannot define any kind of identity. I am everywhere, that, that, that's so my projects and my ideas come from these nomadic experiences that I have as I go from one place to, to the other. So we met for the first time in Mexico. Uh, we met again, I don't remember where. Um, now we are again in Vienna. Tomorrow I'm going to be in Athens, and two days I'm going to New York. And then after a, a couple of, of, of weeks, I'm, I'm planning to go down in Miami to do another project. Well, hopefully you take, take, <laughs> take some rest also. So, and I say that because it's very important how all these nomadic uh, experiences inform my work. Uh, today I want to, you know, to talk about the project that I'm do I have uh, done here, uh, that I realized here, which as you see is an installation. It looks, it has a projection uh, of a video, it has a mount of o oysters, of shells, uh, it has a banner, and uh, as you will see in the back of the room, there are two aprons and some buckets, which right away I, I want the audience, the visitor, to realize that there, that there is in a kind of a laboratory, something is going to happen. There is an, an anticipation of something that is going to, to, to happen. So uh, as the video, I would like to talk about the video. The video is, a, is actually an intervention. The video is a documentary of an intervention which I did in the harbor of New York. And going back to protocols, it was a very, uh, for me, the, the, this gesture and this intervention in the in the in the harbor was exactly to challenge the protocols of a harbor like New York, which, as we know, if we know, sorry for this uh, assumption, which is a harbor which is extremely historic, as it is made out of these amazing rivers, east west at Hudson, where all the immigration came, all the slavery came. It's it's the, the the symbol of colonialism, not only of of the world colonialism, which has been, although it used to be the the uh, the capital of growing oysters, a, a, a huge capitalistic economy, which providing oysters, but also used to be the land of the Lenape indigenous, which they left with them their cosmologies, their culture and their, their history. So in this uh, work, when uh, I start, um, I am again back from Greece, water has been a, a very important component in my life. Water has been, I had always this accessibility, but also water is a symbol of fluidity, of, mm, of a, a, a continuous challenging changes, metamorphosis. Also oysters as I found out during my residency, which I should say, my residency is, an, is a, a, on Governors Island, a small island across Manhattan. You take the ferry for, and in five minutes you are on this island, which used to be as Manhattan, the, the land of Lenape. And in this I had this privilege to be introduced not only to the, the, the waterways, which I was very interested to explore, but also I was very I was uh, introduced to to the knowledge uh, of learning more about oysters, oysters, this vital species, which used to be, as I said, at the beginning of the century, growing and becoming a huge economy for New York, 
but because of the urban design, because of the of the a, a hectic and extremely busy harbor, which has no regulations anymore, because it's uh, totally uh, controlled from the ca uh, capitalistic interest. Um, has destroyed all kinds of life in the underwaters. So the water is extremely polluted. There is no access. You live on, on two islands. They are all fenced. You are not allowed to touch the water. So this beca became a very interesting for me uh, uh, issue, which I wanted exactly to, to challenge the protocols and also the rules of the water as they exist in order to, um, to make us rethink not only the water in New York, but the water in general and, and the right that we have, the human right for clean water. Uh, so as you see here, I have this, uh, this uh, documentary where, where it shows the day that I, in, in order to, to articulate all this uh, interest, I, I decided to create a series, a, a platform of floating uh, um, uh, markers, which they imitate uh, actually the actual markers that we see of when we, we, we are on a boat or whatever, which they help navigation of boats. So I model uh, a series of this, uh, I don't know if, uh, uh, we, we don't have the video. They, they, I, I assume that everybody saw the video. Um, so this, uh, uh, this floating, oh yes, yes. Yes, we can show the video because the, sh the, the video, the, the, there is a couple of very important things that actually one of the interviewers said, this water, belongs to us and nobody can take us. And I felt that was an incredible intervention on a harbor like New York that we were able for the first time, a, an, art, a, an art project took place, and this is really the first time, that they allowed us to, to put these um, symbolic creatures which actually they have cameras and, and, and they survey what they talked. I, it was, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't understand German, so I couldn't intervene in the discussion, but these creatures here, these floating creatures, somehow they survey the underwater and they, dis, and they let us know where are the dead uh, uh, oyster reefs or where are the, the live oysters. So as you see, those, are, uh, 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 those markers are made out of material that we found in, 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 uh, on the island. There is nothing, like everything is, yes. And this is a series of interviews, but what it is very interesting it's is that, that we're in people were surprised so water, to see this. On, on, no on. access to that water. So it's a mystery at one level to most people. Why can't we go to the water? Well, the, we can't go to the water because we're going we're gonna to feel really bad once we hit that water in, so, in different so ways. This is part but, of the but things that draw our attention to this yes. are really important because they uh, if, if enable can, us to kind of ask um, questions about how yes, we've got yes, here yes. and what we can do about it. So this is Governor's Island. It's a very historic island, a very important island in New York. Uh, which has layers, actually. Th there is an archaeology of culture. project like this, you can it's afford to kind of take chances and try new things then and be playful. Dutch, you know, because it's a, English, it doesn't have to stand the, the test. Army, it doesn't have to last which, forever. Uh, most recently, and, um, the, and we don't the, actually know how to perform in the water. Some of them may break or sink or kind of fall over. Utopia, but that's part of the kind of the adventure. We'll see. Which I'm collaborating. Uh, the Harbor School is the only school in the, the where US. Where we're located the, now is on Governor's Island, the children facing Brooklyn, where next to the New York Harbor School and also is the Billion Oyster and Project, the Billion Oyster Project part research the facility that's part of the school project. But this is as close as I can get to the water the, the, the on all of the islands. You can't the touch the water on the islands. And when I moved to New York, uh, I actually had so been living in Helsinki for um, a couple of years before I moved here, and Helsinki embraces the fact.
Actually, that it's a system archipelago. It faces the water all the time. The it wasn't, I did it at New York many times, but it wasn't until I was moving here that I looked out the window the and I looked down and I was like, to map through the, these oh my gosh, I'm moving to another archipelago sensors. city. That Where New York is, the, is an archipelago city with many islands. But it has its back to the water, like I do right now, actually, most of the time. We should touch. So, and here in the, going back, uh, the water what is, is very getting interesting cleaner. in this project. The way we know that is we're starting to I'm see with, with marine organisms and grow in the harbor that But also I'm working, I'm collaborating the 70s and 80s, with young uh, students, because of the pollution which I find it extremely so Act, inspiring, because of the environmental in, in uh, regulation, rich, and, in the knowledge and also, also that the, I the public's understanding of the water body, in my arts, uh, uh, which started to see the water is getting cleaner. All these kind of knowledges, because I believe art is also about knowledge it's about uh, bringing marine, uh, uh, art very close uh, to life. To For me, the, the, using oysters, as I did in this installation upstairs, is not only to bring our attention to how oysters purify, uh, how the oysters improve the water qualities, but also I'm very interested in as, as, as the oyster to, as material. To this project as because actors, it's the only place on the it, island where there's describes beach. History, the rest of the island is, is a bulkhead, a wall, of wall. Um, the name Buttermilk Channel, there's, I'm not sure anybody really knows, but supposedly it I comes from it like the, workers, the fact that the island the laborers, was in colonial days used as pasture for like grazing ecosystems. animals. And they, Which we work a couple times in, a day, in, in, the in, owners in, would walk our, across our, our channel from Brooklyn the, the, to the milk the cows or the goats or the sheep or whatever they is, were, is and then cross back over. And that had to happen on the side. In those days, apparently, there, there wasn't a so channel. It was is, more like a wetland. So as you see, here are some moments that I'm working with my students are helping. A lot of people don't know about the water because the, the, the urban planners, uh, the people uh, that those, design uh, our uh, waterfront uh, areas, in the water. you know, don't As understand you that people need to, to get to uh, the water. So they build uh, parks, but they use high fences, design the waterfronts where uh, there's uh, not uh, an ability to get a boat the there the so folks can go out in the water. Of so the it's, a, it's, it's a little bit of a disconnect. Uh, also, you will see a boat. We, we also. It's a homemade kayak that we made. Also, is a, a, as a metaphor, as a symbol to the little people. They have to, they have to, to, to understand the, the buoys that are in the harbor, the actual you, buoys, because they're navigational marks. And they, if you're in a boat, you need to, to know what them, they mean. Uh, 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 so that you don't run aground into the water or sink your ship and or show run them into the, other ships. the project. So the project became quite well, allowed. Not only I had the opportunity to interfere um, with the protocols of the island, but also it gave the opportunity to people that they, that they have never experienced and started thinking about the, the water, the water, the thinking about the species of just a red and green buoy or a yellow white one and stuff is just like a multiple. It could be any shape that you want it to be. So it was very interesting, actually. Can you go a little bit further? So, um, so anyway, this is um, The first some encounter that people have with the work. So I think we'll put anyway, a smile on people's face. Because they'll, they'll are, see something that's uh, kind of playful and engaging, in order but also to, intriguing. Uh, I but think in a way it evokes lots of different things, not only about how things have gotten here, but why those uh, working with scientists are here. And, in that and uh, form, learning how with, the, with, with it, a, a team of students, um, how to use the, the materiality of the oyster creating other kinds of projects. So building a team of people to come together. So, not only we are creating oyster reefs, but this also we are creating using the material that, that Jenny we combine for oysters for much of her practice, with, uh, which is a very a old people, uh, because these projects uh, don't realize uh, technique on their own. The, the indigenous and Jenny doesn't using, spend her time which you take in oyster, a solo dead oysters, practice, you, really you grind them, you put them in fire, and then you combine with sand and water, and you can use this material in making sculptures, in making forms, 
some of those buildings, you really that you can want imagine. to see what kind of research Actually, comes upstairs, out of that. With a group of people the project that have the opportunity develop. to work, and, and thank I'm you very much. Really we made a series of fossils. So if you go to the, the mount upstairs now, it's not anymore just the, the oysters, but you can see a series of fossils that we create. So it, it, so it, it was a good, another way to show how we can intervene with a piece of art. So for me, Water. the challenge is not the mo only the, the harbor, protocols, but we and will be used also for swimming. the work of, of, of art. The biggest single thing we have to do is control is, is, runoff. Is a final and object, that means but it is something that continues to live. Something is much greener. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Jenny. A great work of sidewalk. art, but also with uh, real, real life impact. Now that uh, you're really having, and uh, it's 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 wonderful. And uh, I still, you mentioned before what kind of other work you have done, and I still have to mention that work that you have done in uh, uh, in collaboration in in Mexico, where uh, Jenny, for example offered uh, tents uh, for uh, street kids and homeless uh, kids in the street on Plaza Garibaldi, etc. So, uh, yeah, intervening really in, in the social context, uh, in the but at the same time, uh, still beautiful, aesthetically uh, wonderful art. I think we are going to uh, get back uh, to you. Before, let me give the floor uh, to uh, Kate as a curator, uh, what kind of impact uh, you have uh, when you are creating your exhibitions and uh, initiatives, please. And with the urgency you face now and we face now. I think there's always, uh, always we have urgency. Yes. <laughs> but especially and, and this is also very interesting yeah. uh, to discuss. Okay. You have to use the mic so... Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm gone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Jenny was um, talking about the nomad experience and I actually want uh, um, to start from this one as well because this year has been a very much nomad experience. I mean, I've been traveling all my life, but never that much and never for that purpose. When I started to do the presentation, uh, I really thought, like, where should I, s where is the start of this? Um, and I decided to remember what was my first picture, first last picture before the war. Uh, and I found this one, and this is Uhanda, where I was actually on the 22nd of uh, February, uh, having my two months traveling, started from Sri Lanka and ending up in Uganda. So I had like pretty uh, intense winter, and um, when I came back home, then just the next day the war started, and that was really unexpected for all of us. Uh, at that time, uh, I really thought there is um, that nothing is gonna really be the same, and actually, uh, it, it will not. But um, eight years ago, where the war really started for for Ukraine, um, we uh, initiated a project called Artists Support Ukraine, um, which uh, was about the artists from all over the world who could send their artworks. Uh, to support Ukrainians. And it didn't really last long because nobody cared about that war. But when the full invasion started this year, uh, people from all, all over the world really started to support us. And we got like images from the greatest artists like Ive Way and you know, there was many of them. And we created a platform that's called, uh, and it still exists, uh, Artists Support Ukraine. And it's actually started with an Instagram page on the first day of the war that we created. And uh, we didn't think it's gonna grow, but it did immediately. And um, at the same time, uh, while I was uh, escaping from the war and going to the west of Ukraine as close to the po Polish border as possible, I actually, uh, while I was driving with my left hand and with my right hand, I was creating this uh, Instagram platform. And um, we got many, many images also from Ukrainian artists. And I was pretty amazed by the uh, immediate uh, change of a subject and uh, the interest, uh, interest in context because like I've worked for many years with artists like uh, who uh, work in different genres like installation and video and many many different and suddenly everybody stopped doing that because everybody was saving their lives and they came back to the roots so they started to draw. And it was, um, I was amazed by the quantity and actually the quality of uh, the images reflecting on the war so quickly. It, it was just in, in a couple of weeks um, after the invasion. And um, 
And I thought that probably we are something more than an Instagram platform and we can grow to something else. So uh, this is when the Artists Support Ukraine uh, Foundation started. And the idea was very simple to uh, print exhibition, like to, we did a ready to print exhibition, which means just a PDF file that you can print in, uh, wherever in the world, in your gallery, in your, um, I don't know, office, beauty salon, wherever. Uh, and uh, we started with the project in uh, Stavanger, in the in the gallery, in a very small uh, town. And then it uh, actually started to travel all over the world. And people wrote us from Canada or from South Korea, asking to to print this project actually. And that was not just about printing an exhibition, it was also about helping the Ukrainian artists because each ex exhibition provoked the um, donation that actually was sent from the people uh, and uh, directed to the artists in need. For those who stayed in Ukraine, who continued their work um, just, just because they believed they had to be there. Um, and um, by that time, I was still in Ukraine, still by the border, and I, I, I thought I'm not going to be like a curator. I will probably end up somewhere on the street because there will be n never a job for me. Um, but um, then I got a call from a um, foundation, um, um, USAID Foundation, actually, who asked um, if I have any project in mind and I was like sitting somewhere in the very not in even a hotel it was just a room that we were renting with a friend of mine uh, with two cats uh, in a very small like a hostel I might say uh, with kids other animals other people everybody and um, and I was just sitting in the corridor because it was the only space to work and then I've got this message and they like when they were asking me if I have an idea of the project I was like Oh yeah, just give me a couple of hours. <laughs> and um, I think I did that concept. Um, yeah, this is actually the Instagram. Uh, you can check it out later. And the exhibitions we do. Uh, since that we did 15, 15 of them, but I will talk a bit later about it. So, but when they wrote me this message, I had no idea how I'm going to leave, actually. And my parents were still in Kiev, and at that time it was like, it is still dangerous, but at that time in March it was really bad. And um, and I I, th I just remembered that um, I, I wrote the uh, novel, it the novel by uh, Carta Sar, which called The Captured House. And I've got this idea that I probably might talk about it more, having all that amazing artworks that artists created during the last months. And it was um, many of them. And we um, uh, started that exhibition, the travel exhibition, The Captured House, that uh, later on had been shown in Berlin, Amsterdam, Rome, in Brussels during the summertime. And that was like quite a big show with 15 artists participating and more than 200 artworks. Uh, all like 80% of them were created during this period, like during the last um, uh, nine months, but at that time uh, the war just started. Um, and of course, some of them were anticipating the war during the uh, last eight years. Artists were talking about that, that is coming and nobody will listen to them as it all, uh, often happens. So, um, I was uh, on the road all that time, uh, traveling between the cities, um, doing the projects and uh, living with my colleagues. Uh, so it was like 24-7 for several months. At, uh, sometimes we had uh, separate rooms, sometimes we had uh, one room, some, sometimes we had one bed. So uh, I slept with them in, in one bed. It, it doesn't sound sexy. So it was just an experience that we had to go through. and. Um, but uh, what was happening actually is we were working closely with the institution, like in each city, and with the uh, in, in, in interacting with the local communities. And um, people were really um, impressed by that experience uh, that they went through uh, at the exhibition. Um, because, I mean, the war is in the news, of course, and you can, like, you can get really tired of it because it's the same the bad picture there is not ma many good news comes from the war so 
after two or three months, people get really tired of that, uh, didn't listen, didn't watch anymore. They already helped. They did ev everything they could. So what else? Um, and um, the uh, exhibitions that we did, uh, and the other exhibitions probably as well, or other cultural projects, did something um, else. They uh, involved people not on the level of the thought, but on the level of their feelings. And um, that really ha had changed something. So, and of course, in each city we had a very different experience, but for example, um, it's all started in Berlin, and in Berlin um, we had it in a um, uh, like uh, in a basement. There was a, th there is a, a great spa a space called Altimunse with the basement, which is dark, cold, wet, and uncomfortable. And I thought that this would be probably the best place to do an exhibition in because. Uh, that was actually the state uh, uh, in, in which people at uh, that time lived, um, you know, uh, just trying to, yeah, to, to, to escape from bombing. So um, people who came there, they were actually crying, and, um, and those who didn't cry, we sent them back. A joke. <laughs> but um, uh, that wasn't my intention to make them cry, but at one point they felt something they didn't feel watching the news. So uh, what artists did, I think this is what it was the most important, that they had this personal conversa conversation with each viewer, viewer, with everybody who came. And then uh, what happened to the visitors is that somehow they felt that this is, actually this is the life they lead. This is how they live in the similar houses. They have a similar daily life, similar interests, similar, similar problems. So they felt really close to, to to the people of Ukraine, and that was really important. And then we had uh, like a performers, uh, like also several live performances. And this one is by Daria Kolsova, the artist who actually uh, made the sculpture hats of children who de was dead at that time. It was 200. Now we have more than 600 children. So she was actually making as many hats as children and children children were dying like every day so she was continuously uh, during the whole exhibition doing that so that was pretty dramatic but um and that actually worked in the first months and this is uh, what art how artists reflected to the war but uh by the august um something has changed because it was too much even for us because we've got that experience, that hard experience, and then their, you know, their artistic ref reflection, uh, which usually uh, takes or needs to take more time and um, distance. Now, w w this time we didn't have no time, no distance, so there was like just the clear, the the the, the clear, fast reflection. Uh, and uh, I'm still looking forward for something else, of course, after the end of the war, but um, this is what we've got now. But then um, we really needed something more of a hope, I would say, and uh, at the, that time I came back to Ukraine because I ha haven't been in ho at home like for the last nine months or so and i was really like i was really looking forward for that i, kn I kn knew it's it's not safe still but um i just had to do it um uh, just to feel different because i felt homeless and like it was very com uncomfortable so i really needed to learn to land somewhere and i came and um I, almost immediately we started the next project which which called train to victory uh, and um, it called like that because uh, we have uh, painted seven wagons uh, in collaboration with Ukrainian railways, each of them dedicated to, to the occupied region. And um, the idea is that uh, we will we talk about people who are actually being heroes without being in, in the army just because they want to help as, a, as doctors or vol volunteers or others who um, who are helping. Um, but then the next idea was to send the train to those occupied uh, territories once they will be free. And we didn't know it's going to happen. Uh, and we worked with the street artists, with mural artists, uh, different, uh, different, uh, different artists. But then what happens is that the train of victory 
did uh, like two important steps. First, uh, the train itself uh, became uh, like a symbol of, of, of Ukrainian identity because it, it was used by uh, all of the officials who come to Ukraine to visit Zelensky from one side and from uh, other side when it, it wasn't meeting the officials. It was actually uh, it was sent to one of the uh, territory territories who was uh, which was deoccupied and that was a Kherson that was the first place um, I don't have it here but still so just like a couple of weeks ago the uh, Kherson uh, the city just yeah the, the city in the south on the uh, sea almost uh, it was deoccupied it was like a big celebration and the first train which went there was a train for victory. So, um, I mean, we would still have the train who would go there for people, but uh, they were so happy to see that that train was dedicated to them even before it came there. So it, it was a symbol of victory for them. Resistance of a resistance, yeah, much before. Um, and then um, we continuously doing different projects, and uh, this is another one. Um, um, you probably have heard uh, about Azovstal is a big factory that also actually is a symbol of resistance that uh, a huge factor of metal in Mariupol uh, and um, uh, in a collaboration with Metinvest who owns the Azovstal we found the last uh, steel pieces and we made an installation from those uh, steel pieces and after that cut it that on bracelets like on the small bracelets which like like this one, uh, and this is actually from Azovstal, and each of them were sent for a, like a symbolic number of like I think thirty or forty euros, something like that, and all of those money went to to support of uh, of military service. So, um, and this is the last one I want to talk today. Is the one we are doing right now, uh, and this is why I am actually in Europe, uh, and. Um, we're doing the mural project in collaboration with Ukrainian and international artists. Uh, and we do them uh, in, uh, we did already in Berlin, uh, Marseille, and actually Vienna. Probably you recognize the location. Um, and yeah, please come check it out. Uh, and the idea is that uh, somehow, uh, well, the war is st still there, but um, in spite of that, we are uh, also um, looking for a better future, and this better future is obviously in Europe, and Ukraine is going to be a part of European Union sooner or later, and now we have all those official, you know, conversation ab about it. Uh, and I was thinking that it will be great to talk about it, not on the la level of officials, but also on the level, on the artistic level, on the level of, like, a just people commu communication between themselves. So we, uh, we decided to do that collaborative project and it wasn't an easy decision because for artists who don't know each other in most cases, it's like it's not easy to find that, uh, you know, a solution to, even if they're working in similar styles or whatever, uh, it's not only it's not only about style. It's more about the visions and things like that. So I thought that if they would really find that way, then probably people and officials will also do. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Katya. Oh my God, getting a little bit emotional. Uh, my admiration, really, how you keep on uh, doing your work, and I wonder, have you ever lost uh, like a uh, hope, or how do you keep going? Well, I think uh, to to uh, well, I think to keep going is the only I thing. Mean, yeah, I can do it be because uh, without it, it's going to be really hard. Yeah. And another question: um, like you're in Austria now, um, uh, and and connecting here with uh, the local scene, um, is there any wish from you for us that we can do? Oh yeah, I I would love for Ukrainian artists to be more visible, especially for those who are already working uh, and living in Vienna or in Austria. And there are several great ones that w would be really interesting. Mm -hmm. And I think they would ev even fit like in the exhibition like that. And it would be really interesting to to check them out and mm -hmm. probably to integrate them more in uh, Viennese art scene. Okay, we will do that. Um, are there any questions? Yeah. Yes. Any questions from the audience? 
I don't <laughs> After four hours or five hours of uh, discussions, uh, well, uh, I still would like uh, to ask uh, Jenny, you have been uh, so active. Um, do you, I mean, in your work, certainly social engagement and working with communities was al always uh, center, you know. But uh, would you uh, expect from curators, from artists, to, to, to take responsibility, to play an, uh, a role? Um, is this something we have to expect from artists? Uh, to, to engage, uh, or is it okay not to work politically and uh, intervene uh, socially, etc.? What is your no, take on that? Contrary. I think always my work has been very critical, um, uh, and I always believe that uh, the, the art work is about process, uh, and that's a very good example of my whole art practice historically. And actually, the projects that I create, even videos, they are very, uh, they, they, they are media based, which are very also very ephemeral. They they never convey uh, uh, this uh, objectivity that you own is something that. Uh, so I always believe that art is about uh, life. And, uh, and, it, 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 and it should and it's be very inclusive. So it allows communities, it allows everybody to engage one way or the other. And this is also another, oh, the, the, this is also, if you notice, always going back to the tents, for example. If you remember, the tent, when, uh, which was, it started as a project for the Manifesta in Rotterdam at Vita da Vita, the museum. Actually, it had two parts. It was one installation in the museum at Vita da Vita, who had a, a surveillance camera in the, in, the, in the tent. People, in order to go to the museum, that they, they had to make reservations through a, an agent, through a travel agent, to go in the museum and spend a night at the museum. And the surveillance camera somehow was documenting and was capturing all the, all the, the museum life and how the people were spending their night and what was the experience spending time in, 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 in a museum. At the same time, I was taking the same tent and I was uh, pitching the tent in a public space. And I was uh, inviting people to come in and, and sleep in my tent. And what was amazing is how right there you had two kind of audiences. The audience of the museum, which was uh, understood all the process of the art you make, you know, they were accepting the, the uh, spending time in the museum. But when you, 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 you pitch a tent on a public space, then it becomes a very vulnerable. You become very accessible. And I remember the first pitching I did in, in the prostitution park in, in, in Amsterdam, in, in Rotterdam, which, as you know, is very legal. Prostitution is very legal. But as soon as I pitched my tent in the prostitution camp, the, the girls became very upset because they thought my tent was very comfortable and I was going to attract most of their clients. So we had the, 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 the police came, uh, the, uh, so they took my tent and it, the, they put me on the boat and I did the, the, the performance of the boat. I must say, I did th this project in 10 countries and um, when I was in Palestine, I would never forget that because a tent in Palestine means home. They always thought that I was a prostitute, that I was inviting people to come in my tent. So it was an incredible project which I had to stop myself because exactly it, this relationship with every community and every culture uh, was informing not only my, my surveillance aspects of my project, but also they were informing the cultural Complex. sensitivity and complexity from every uh, from each culture. And my responsibility there, I come and say again to say, as an artist, when I get into a community and what I learn from doing so many projects, I can talk for hours, as you know, the projects I have done, is that 
What I learned is when you do a project with community, you have to communicate. You want, you have to be part, not part of the community, but they ha you have to ask what they want. Yeah. And that's why I did the project, sure. exactly. And that's why I always do assemblies. Yeah. I, 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 I create assemblies and I invite the people. Uh, so all together we, we d decide what we want to do. I know that uh, we have to close down, but I still have one last question for both of you. Is there one project in your mind that you still, it's not realized yet, but y you want to realize the next one or uh, that you need a wonder to do it, uh, a wish? A wish. <laughs> but no, there's I the one. No, there's two. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, let us know the two. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Briefly, they, uh, briefly, yeah. Uh, the first one I really want to create for many years, the art incubator, incubator for artists who uh, are just starting their careers and they need mentorship and they need a space to work to make it affordable for them, to have a c kind of a studio that they can work in and then after six months they are gone on this, they can stay for like a full price or whatever or change or give it to someone else. Um, so I really need a big factory for that because um, <laughs> I really wanted we to be fun. yeah because I really wanted to have like a great community for them to have not only work and mentorship but the network of yeah. course and the other one is I really want to do the uh, the big exi big exhibition of Ukrainian avant-garde somewhere here in Europe and to, to finally to uh, for everybody to know that all the artists avant-garde artists uh, like Malevich or uh, Exter um, would uh, be uh, finally called Ukrainians, not Russians, as they were listed in, in museums for many years. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, both will be realized, I'm sure. Uh, well, th many there are many projects. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to say one which is the, the simplest, and it, it's going to happen, I hope, very soon. Sure. Uh, <laughs> next year, Greece, uh, actually one amazing city of Greece, Elefsina, which is a coastal city, is going to be the capital of Europe. So my dream, my, my, my goal is to do, I, I already have in mind, to do, it is the most polluted city maybe in Europe. Is, it, is, is, is criminal what is happening? And nobody's caring about this. So my in, in, intention is, um, as I have been, learn so much uh, working with indigenous. Uh, what I want to do in Greece it, it, as, as a project is to write the laws of water for Greece, which will come from a series of, um, I plan of um, town, hall meetings. town hall meetings. And, but then what is going to happen, we are going to do a huge performance, which we are going to give these laws of water for Greece uh, not only to the mayor, but to the, our prime minister. And that will be my performance, is to present our prime minister with the laws of water for Greece. So they finally Can take you know. care, yes, from this pollution and uh, from this. That's my next project. <laughs> we will come and visit. <laughs> <laughs> and so water performance. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Jenny, uh, Katja, and also to you, many thanks. Also many thanks to Rainer Feringer, who is our chief technician. Uh, great work, endless hours. <laughs> and also, also many thanks uh, to uh, the Artwick team. Yeah. Julia, Resi, Juliana, uh, Lena and uh, uh, Rosita. Thank you so much. And tomorrow, don't forget, 24 hours, 24 hours, uh, art week. <laughs> More performances. Uh